Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had every military veteran smash that subscribe button, go ahead and have them smash it right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to all the patrons. I love you. Believe me when I tell you, you're the heartbeat of this channel. You're the only thing keeping this going. Stay tuned for your well-deserved shout out at the end. This episode right here, man, September 27, 2004. There are a lot of life-changing experiences that paved and catapulted my life, you know, in a certain direction. And this is one of those stories. You know, I often mix it up and I'll tell a story about my deployment in Iraq in 2004. Now, off, now and then, especially when it comes to dates, right? Dates are my triggers. You know, September 10th, the day that my friend Daklon was killed, September 27th. I'm going to tell you guys that story right now. May 12th, when I got hit by my IED, lost my hearing in my right ear. April 15, you know, all these dates, right? They're all in my head. I'm going to give you guys a backstory. I was 19 years old in the army infantry i was stationed in germany schweinfurt germany my unit was charlie company 118 infantry second platoon war pigs all right when you're infantry that's your job right close with it close with destroy the enemy period you're gonna go out there front lines as they say is there front lines in modern warfare no it's 360 degrees that's the job right <laughs> So we were destined to go to Iraq. We had our orders as our unit. We had been training together. We'd been training 22-hour days. Believe me, that whole year leading up to Iraq, we'd been training 20-hour days, 22-hour days, 30 days at a time. It was freaking a lot of training, let me tell you. We spent more time out in the field than anything. Well, about a month before we deployed, the army, the big army, came up with this idea that they were going to pick one platoon from our company, Charlie Company, to get attached to tankers, to a tanker unit, Bravo 177 Armor, who are also based out of uh, Germany. Tankers are the ones that drive the freaking tanks and big old guns, boom, blow it up, right? You guys seen the movies. Those are tankers. Well, lo and behold, they picked our platoon, second platoon to go. Second platoon to get casted off and disbanded from the company. So while the rest of our unit and battalion went to the hometown of Saddam Hussein, Tikrit, Tikrit, Iraq, we got sent to uh, right off the top too, right in Kuwait, man. We got sent to Balad, Iraq, which is 50 miles north of Baghdad with the tankers. With the tankers, mind you. So we were not happy, right? We were not having it. We had been training with our buddies, our brothers, and our other unit. We knew each other. I mean, we were still in our platoon, but come on, man. We got disbanded. So we felt like the redheaded stepchildren. That's a true story. So what? when we get to Balad, I was 19 years old. Remember this. I'm new to life. I'm semi-new to the army. Definitely new to war. What they had comprised was one company of these following platoons. Us, regular infantry, 11 Bravo. One platoon of National Guard. So just so you know, there's roughly, I don't know, 31 men in a platoon. Four squads. So we had one platoon of us, one platoon of National Guard from New York. I believe they were infantry. But you have to understand, when it comes to National Guard, they're only training one week in a month, two weeks a year. So they weren't training as much, as hard as we were, right? So just giving you that thought process of who we teamed up with. <laughs> a platoon of tankers, right? They were there playing Xbox. And a platoon of combat engineers, 9E from 9th Engineer, 9E. They were based. So we were a white platoon. The, infant, the National Guard from New York was blue platoon, and uh, the 9E were red platoon. 
Now, a combat engineer, those are the ones that are um, specialized in explosives, blowing things up, all things, you know, C4, debt charges, a whole, A. Hey, we need, we got a whole minefield. We need the engineers to come clear, right? Well, at the time, they were doing grunt work the whole entire time. Doing the same shit we were. So since now we're in a unit that's new to us on a small fob of different MOSs, you know, there's pride between MOSs. You know, 11 infantry, we think they're the, we're the best, you know, and rightfully so. I mean, we're going there. We're going to fucking put in work on behalf of our government. Um, we're getting to know the people from the other platoons. And they were cool dudes, the engineers. Remind you, I, I was 19 years old. Every platoon has a platoon sergeant at the rank of E6, E7, E7. Every platoon has a, a platoon leader, a lieutenant. Those are the two in charge of the platoon at the platoon level. Well, the platoon sergeant for Red Platoon, the engineers, was a man by the name of Joselito Villanueva, Filipino dude. And I just looked up his age right now. I Googled his name and I looked up his age. He was only 36 years old. 36. I just turned 40. He was 36, but to me, he was a father figure, right? And I've said this before. I was 19. Anybody older than me, even 22 years old, 23, 24, 26, they, the way those men conducted themselves was, I've never met men like those, like those guys. I've never, you want to know why I'm driven to <laughs> attempt, attempt to fall, fill in their boots, which I never could because they gave the ultimate sacrifice. You know, they, they were killed in action. I looked at those, at those men like father figures, right? My dad was back home. I, my dad wasn't there for me, right? He was doing his thing. I was in a war zone. I had these men to guide me, lead me, and protect me. Those were it. Joselito Villanueva, he was Filipino. He was from Los Angeles, California, L.A., 36 years old. Like a dad to me. Like a dad in general, man. His presence, warm presence, caring, professional, squared away. It's a typical soldier. He had been in the Gulf War. The first invasion of Iraq in the 90s. This was 2004 now. There was um, a main highway, MSR Tampa, Highway 1, that runs all the way from Kuwait all the way to northern Iraq. That's the main traffic route. You'll see all the convoys. you see all the IED craters on the side of the road, ambushes. That's the main route. Well, that, that was part of our sector of patrol. Balad. We had a little bit of that. We had a little bit of the cemetery. We had a little bit of everything, right, within a, the city of Balad. So early on in the deployment, yeah, I got there in, what did I get there in? February, March. February slash March of 2004 is when we got to Balad. So we spent the whole month in Kuwait training. Then we drove up north. Well, Red Platoon got their first casualties early on in the deployment a roadside bomb hit the humvee that sergeant first class Villanueva was in it killed the driver specialist tick killed his driver and Villanueva took a piece of shrapnel to the back of his neck right purple heart but he survived and i remember thinking like that's when the war started to become real, real in the sense of, damn, I didn't know that dude tick. I've seen Villanueva around there. They sleep right next to us. They sleep right in the little building next to right next to us. They slept and they just got hit. They just took a casualty. They just took a loss. We're all Americans. We're all American soldiers, right? That's one of us. The deployment goes on. We start seeing some bullshit. Right, it starts happening. Things start happening. I told you about the time, September 10th, 
fuck me, man. Let me put it like this, right? Let me put it like this. We get to go on R&R, 15 days of leave. You get to go back home. Halfway through your deployment. It was a 13-month deployment. Guess who I go to R&R with? Joselito Villanueva. Me and him. We got tasked. We got picked to go on R&R. So we go to Camp Anaconda, which is a big, massive Air Force base. We turn in our weapons. I don't know if we turned in our weapons there or when we got to Kuwait. Either way, we're, our cots are next to each other. Remember, he's 36. He looks like a dad to me. I'm 19. Kid. He's a platoon sergeant. I'm a freaking E3, E4 specialist. I'm an E4 specialist. He's a E7. Right? And there's that chain of command difference. Dude is outranks me big time. Senior NCO. Damn near a first sergeant. We get to Kuwait. I remember I buy a Cypress Hill CD. We had CD players back in the day, youngsters, 2004. Not all this high tech stuff. <sighs> Listening to my CD. He tells me he has to do laundry if I want to go do laundry with him so we can share the washing machine. I'm like, yeah, you know, re very respectful of him. Go do our laundry, hang out, eat, start getting close, right? We go, we land in Texas. He's about to board a flight to go to L.A. I'm about to board a flight to go to San Diego. He tells me, all right, man, I'll see you in 15 days. Have fun. Enjoy the family. This and that. I'm like, all right, you know, uh, sorry, you too. So he goes. I forgot what I called him, you know. It was something professional. Um, it was always, everything was etiquette and professionalism. <sighs> Fuck, man. So on our way, 15 days, I'm a freaking drunken mess. Don't want to go back to Iraq, but I know I have to go back to Iraq because my brothers are still there fighting, getting fucked up, roadside bombs. We go to Dallas, Tech, uh, Dallas Airport. I'm in my DCUs. He's in his DCUs. That's the desert camouflage. They made us fly in those at that time. We're at the bar. And some random guy, man, I don't know, he'll never know this. He's like, hey, can I buy you guys a beer? And I, and I looked at the sergeant, Villanueva, and he looked at me. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know, if you don't mind, get us two. And I'm just like, wow, I'm 19 years old. I can't even be drinking in, in the States, right? Drinking limit is 21. I'm in uniform. I'm with the sergeant first class. This dude's just like, yeah, yeah, get us. So he gives us a, there I am drinking a beer with Joselito Villanueva. We thank the guy. Mind you, Joselito Villanueva had already gotten hit by an IED and took shrapnel to the back of the neck. He had already lost a soldier in the same Humvee that he was riding in. He had already been in the Gulf War. He looks at me and he tells me, I don't want to go back. I, I don't want to go to Iraq. I don't want to go back. And that caught me off guard because I'm like, what the hell? He's a E7. He's an E7, right? Like, I said, hey, we got, like, we got to go back, right? Like, I, it's almost like I took, took, took the lead on, like, hey, like motivating, right? Because, hey, sometimes you need to bring your battle buddy up. I guess it doesn't matter what rank. And he's like, you're right. You're right. We got to go back. They're still there. He kind of snapped out of it. We go back. September 10th happens, the day that my friend gets killed. On my mom's birthday, Edgar Daclon, another Filipino. This guy was from Torrance, California. Well, when we called in the medevac, the helicopter, f to pick up Daclon's body and my wounded friend O'Neill and my wounded Lieutenant Torres, I'm standing straight up in a dirt. I'm standing straight up in a dirt field in shock from everything that had just transpired. And I feel an arm come over my shoulder and bring me down and say, hey, take a knee. Take a knee, Farrell. So I take a knee and I look and it's Villanueva. 
And he looks at me and he's like, hey, you're doing good, man. You're doing good. Just keep doing what you're doing. Everything's good. Just keep doing what you're doing. And he calmed me, right, in the fucking worst. He called me on the worst day of my life. That it, to this day is the worst day of my life. That was September 10, 2004. Pay attention to the dates. Today's September 27. <sighs> so he had that experience of losing a fellow brother in his presence. I had just had that experience then of losing a fellow brother from our platoon, our medic. So you can see I got really, 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 really close with Joselito Villanueva, right? I believe things happen for a reason. I believe we meet people in our lives for a reason. Nothing is by sheer luck. Everything is fate. I even have fate tattooed on my back. I had fate written on the inside of my helmet. Hold on. This is the helmet that I wore in Iraq, actual, the, ac the actual helmet, night vision, all the sweat. As you can see, I wrote fate. In case you guys thought I was lying. So fast forward to September 27, 2004, our platoon, White platoon, we were QRF, Quick Reaction Force. That's basically you hang out on the camp, the FOB, forward operating base, and you wait till something happens, and then you respond, Quick Reaction Force. So you kind of have to stay ready. Boots on, gear nearby, just ready, ready to fucking go. So then we hear, red platoon is in contact, red platoon is being ambushed, small arms fire, the right, the it's, we couldn't hear the gunfire, but we knew where they were at, right? We knew our sector, and they were pretty freaking close to our FOB. Red platoon's in contact, red platoon's in contact, requesting QRF ASAP. So I remember, yeah, I was a go-getter. I think I still am a go-getter, but I'm just like, hey, let's go, telling the sergeant, let's go, let's go, right? Like, time had just slowed down like molas molasses, man. Let's go, let's go, let's go, right? Let's go, let's go. They need our help. Let's go, let's go. They're in contact. So finally, we load up the vehicles and we go. Haul ass. I want to say, I don't know if I was in a Humvee or a 113, the little armored personnel carrier. I really can't remember. Could have been the 113. And there's a wood line, not a wood line, a field, right? Because where I was at in Balad is agricultural. And there was a field. And approximately, probably like, probably like 75 meters away. Enough to where I can s see people, I just couldn't identify their face. I couldn't tell who they were. I see a couple of soldiers come out of the field and then I see a, them open up a body bag. Right, we all carried body bags with us. <laughs> we all carried our own body bags. Go figure. See them open it up. See them pick up a body. Put it in the body bag. Start zipping it up. And I'm like, fuck. Fuck. Please let that be ING. I remember telling myself that. Please let that be ING. Please let that be ING. Iraqi National Guard. I, fuck, man. Fuck. We just lost Daklan. Fucking hearing on the radio. And then it comes over the radio. Be advised. Red 7 is KIA. Red, Red 7 is killed in action. Right. Red 7 was Joselito Villanueva, the platoon sergeant from 9E. 
And then it's just one of those things where your whole world just like, poof, it does what it does. I can't explain those fucking feelings. I remember putting my head down like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I was just with him. I was just with him on R&R. Why? Why? Why did I, why did I get to know him, you know? And as I say that now, why did I get to know him? I remember I went through a weird fucking phase where I didn't want to get to know anybody else. I didn't want to befriend anybody else because of how bad it sucked every time they, they, they would get killed, right? I didn't want that. That lasted a, a while too, years, where I would tell myself, I don't want to, I don't want to meet somebody new. Nah, it's just going to hurt. It's just going to hurt when they die. That's the story of September 27, 2004. Joselito Villanueva. Dude was like a dad to me, right? I'm glad I'm able to share his name, share his honor. To, to, to just said for me to be at peace, to know that his legacy didn't die there and then. Dude's always going to live in my heart, in my mind. I got his name tattooed on my back. And then I told you guys about October 1st, we invaded, uh, <laughs> I got to end it on a funny note, man. It was, got too dark there for a second for me. I told you guys October 1st, we invaded the city of Samara. <laughs> well, we lost our brother Daklon on September 10th. We lost Villanueva on September 27th. Well, October 1st. 2004, we invaded the city of Samara, which had been taken over by insurgents, right? It's safe to say, it's safe to say we were a little pissed off when we went into that fucking city. <laughs> and you knew which house the engineers had just cleared, right? Because we were raiding houses block by block by block by block for days. It was the initial offense. The offensive push was three days initial. You knew which house the engineers had cleared because the house would catch fire after they left. All these houses were on fire, black smoke. And it's like you look and you're like, that's the engineers right there. They're putting it work. That's the engineers right there. You, they were fucking pissed. They were fucking pissed. With that, this episode was sponsored by the following patrons. Pretending to be gangster when you're a pedophile. Golly, that's a fucking change of pace. Who it or lose it? Who the fuck took a shit in the urinal? Nalgas Asadas, Manhattan Giant Pizza in Anaheim. Go check them out. Dodger Man 83, John Wick, Abuelita's Journey, Abuelita's Irma, CO's Gone Wild 69, Eddie 3609. You're a long way from Starbucks, homie. <laughs> You guys should tell the new CEOs that. Ali, the green wall. <laughs> You're going to have DJ Vodka fucking say, I told you, I told you the green wall exists. They're all, they've infiltrated this Patreon. The green wall is funding Hector Bravo. And so, Ismael, Tarvin, Carlos, Ramiro de Leon, the hound, Miss R, Milkers, Danners on my feet. Speaking of Greenwall, La Primera Play at Your Own Risk 209, That Chanate Warrior, William, Rigoberto, Theo, 949, Desmadrosos, Menace to Society, A-Rod, Chris, Lizniak, Nisi B, I don't know, I'm not the regular, keep pushing forward, Rodrigo, A La Verga 209, Brian the Lone Specialist, Jesus, West, West, S. Shags, The Homie Turtle 13, Pachanga 209, Darlene from Santa Ana, F Your Mandates, Write Me Up, VSP Yeti, Sabatino, Adaberto, Mercenary Mindset, Any Reason I Can't Hold You, Fontaine, Dixon, McCrary, Kevin, Kern Valley State Prison Sergeant with two years in, relax, you ain't shit. <laughs> hey, somebody take a voice clip and then play it when you're around him. Ready?
Kern Valley State Prison Sergeant with two years in. Relax. You ain't shit. Program time. Hey, I'm just medical. On to page number two. Carnalito, treatment not time and force fit. My outdoor activity. GG11 Bravo, the legend himself. Don Chicharo. Shut the fuck up and make it wink. A la verga, 760. No soy tu perra. Perra, no te confundas. Miss Raw G O G Ride. Vote news come out. The prison psychologist. Fuerte 84. Zeus. Michigan Wolverines. I have an eight hour chrono. Put me out six self. A wall like Monty. One bad yard pedal. Cherokee cat. I gave you five chits and you gave me two back. Motherfucker's <laughs> gonna have an aneurysm. Loco Moco. The big bad wolf. Raider 62. L E like Gerardo Rigo SD. Pelon 1205. Who's doing the pipe? Denise. The real McCoy. JB Smooth. A pogue in a six pack. CO. Narcan don't work. My Sally is down. Man down. SO. Robert, Ricardo, Maladjusted, Ragtoss 5.0, Carmine the Pitbull, Lori, the homie CJ Zavalza, EOP Whisper, Fuck Your 602, Las Vegas Flights Live, go check them out. Viva Mexico, cabrones, TJ Hooker. <sighs> TJ Hooker, also Tijuana Hooker. No way, man. Lockdown 5, La Reina, Winston, Tony, El Skid, I never been. The OG Hobie Cat, lead with love. Albert 12, Soul Stars Motorcycle Club supports your movement, and we support Soul Stars Motorcycle Club. J.I., Claudia, Esquiel, Nova, Linda, the retired CEO, Michigan Wolverines, the homie Marius, Robert, Chevelle 66. Hey, girl, pop me up so I can give you some OJT. Central control, there's a code one in my pants, and the homie rags. If you have not already signed up for that Patreon, make sure you hit that link in the description below. You're definitely missing out. I love you. Happy Friday. Keep pushing forward.